They say you cannot play E4 without playing a little bit of Austria because every single patch Austria remains the greatest nation in all of Europe except the Ottomans. <laughs> the, the Ottomans can be a little bit of a problem here. That's why we're going to be taking care of them sooner rather than later. Before we get to that point though, let's uh, go ahead and uh, analyze our initial situation because compared to the previous patch there have been some changes to Austria and we got to go through these changes and figure out the most optimal way of playing this nation i'm talking about the meta of actually playing austria in the current patch we do start of course as the emperor of the hre and we are insanely overpowered so rest assured you can never go wrong with anything you do as the austrians we want to do our first mission obviously secure the electors in order to get the pu over bohemia which should be fairly easy to do now in order to do that we got to get 100 opinion of us with five electors so the easiest way to do it is to just get a alliances and royal marriages with the kingdoms and you can also use your bestow imperial grace in order to improve the relations as well if you really really need to do it fast take note sometimes if some of the electors have rivaled each other it might not be feasible to ally both of them so keep that in mind check their rivalries beforehand so for example here i got an alliance with brandenburg but because they're rival to saxony saxony is going to be less likely to ally me however even though it has minus 50 from me being allied to brandenburg i still have 76 on the positive so i can ally them this can change if you wait for one month so remember that always you want to get these alliances within the first month of the game so pause after every single day we just passed two days and we already sent three diplomatic uh envoys around the hre now we waited for a few more so our diplomats are back and we're gonna get an alliance with trier similar situation i allied palatinat before so they're not super happy about it but they still would support me that being said it actually would make more sense for me to get an alliance with the mines which does not have any rivals that are my allies right now same goes for Köln. so i'm gonna get Köln, trier palatinat saxony and uh brandenburg now the next part is obviously we're gonna get royal marriages with them but we do have to wait for one month in order to get those royal marriages so it's gonna take a couple of months before we get that mission enacted what we can do in the meanwhile we can get our rivals obviously you want to go for bohemia since bohemia is going to be the first target and by getting rival in bohemia and then enforcing our p you over bohemia we also gain power projection which we want to get to 50 fast since 50 power projection means we get one of each mana points monthly sadly in this particular run burgundy has rivaled us so it's uh, gonna make things a little bit more intricate but uh i'm happy it's fine i don't mind having a rival in burgundy maybe with a little bit of rng we can even get the burgundian inheritance if charles becomes king and dies quickly who knows it's been known to happen and the third rival i'm gonna go for the venetians because we also want to take the venetian lands and make this area here our main trade node the venetian node being considerably better than our starting vienna node and we can also easily filter a lot of trade into venice plus venice is an end node so there's no money filtering out of venice which is the case with the, our current node of vienna and many of the other nodes there's only three end nodes obviously venice genoa and uh, the english channel right now at least we also want to get ready for the war with the bohemians so we're going to bring our troops by the border with bohemia we also need to get some more units so what we're going to do is we're going to be recruiting the uh grand company but we need some money for that which means we got to do our estate because we have 30 percent starting crown loans i'm gonna be getting the plus one a mana privilege for all three of the estates take note this does mean you have zero crown loans but because we do have zero crown loans whenever we conquer new lands we get a lot of crown loans as consequence so we're going to fix our crownland situation really fast plus these debuffs over here are not really that uh bad reality is that the only thing we need to worry about here is the uh monthly autonomy change nothing else we can also summon the diet and we can uh, seize crownlands right afterwards so we only get 0.20 monthly autonomy change as consequence okay i have to say all three of these missions are absolutely poo poo i'm just gonna go for the improved relations with the curry i guess that's the easiest one if you want to have an easier time getting your mission done you can also get religious diplomats that offers plus 25 relations with all catholic nations so that means we already have a hundred relations with the palatinat well it looks like we have with three countries a hundred relations so that is palatinat mines and Köln. so we just need to get the relations with the saxons and the uh, brandenburgians that means just got to get the royal marriage which is on the 14th of december and guys i apologize if i talk a little bit more about everything here i'm trying to make this a little bit more of a comprehensive video in which you guys can more easily follow me through with this video it's going to be a little bit longer than my regular videos as well probably
probably because um, I'm gonna try and keep more vital information in it. And if you enjoy this kind of video and you want me to continue this campaign, if we get 7,000 likes in the first few days af after this video is released, then I'm gonna make a second part continuing it because I will get the idea that you enjoy this type of video and you want to see more. And if you, we do that, I will also do it instantly. So I'll start recording and releasing it as quickly as I can then. And hey, if you were uh, watching the video, you haven't subscribed yet, consider subscribing. I'm trying to get to a trillion billion subscribers in order to achieve a world domination and restore the Roman Empire. And uh, yeah, any help would be appreciated, really. I'm also going to give out the patronage of the arts for the extra prestige. And I'm going to be taking the burger loans. This means I get five loans at 1% interest. So I'm only getting 0.36 interest, which is close to nothing really. And it means we have 495 ducats so we can actually recruit our units. I'm actually going to go for the independent company. Let's go with these bad boys in uh, Vienna Wald, I believe this is cold. We still have up to 63 force limits so we can recruit a lot more units. I'm not going to recruit anymore right now because I have enough of the war with the Bohemians, but I will recruit after before we go to war with the Hungarians. Take note, I'm also not giving out the 25% advisor cost reduction privileges yet because I first want to get one stability in order to get the passive prosperity in my provinces. Once you get passive prosperity going, you need one stability for that. So that's why I'm waiting. But once you get that going, you can get up to minus 10% development cost reduction in provinces, 25% goods produced and autonomy change reduction. So overall getting 100% prosperity in your lands is insanely powerful. And we want to get that the sooner the better. If we gave out the 25% advisor cost reduction privileges, it would increase the cost of getting stability so instead of getting it next month which is what we're gonna do now we'd have to wait for at least like four or five more months so that's five months in which we're not getting that prosperity which is a waste of time in my opinion i'm also gonna give out the supremacy over the crown simply so i get the extra loyalty threshold for my estates i need to have above 50 loyalty threshold for all three estates so that this way it passively goes to 50 percent and i can just seize crownlands every five years as long as i have the loyalty and this way i don't get the rebels either at the same time. The reason I also recruited the free company before the first man passed is because I want to get some uh, morale for them. Mercenaries recover morale a little bit slower and getting that one extra month taken there means that we start with 1.09 morale for these bad boys rather than uh, less than that. 13th of December we can get these royal marriages done and 14th we can get the other one so that means we can enact the secure the electors mission which means we got a restoration of union on the bohemians within the first month because I see a lot of people in the comment section especially my uh, previous austria video with the previous patches how did you get it within the first month i hope by me giving you the full picture now explaining in detail how you can get it it's a lot easier for you guys to get that as well and follow alongside with me now we can do this we can attack these bad boys here with the enforce the union cb we can even co-belligerate switzerland i'm probably not going to take anything from them but i'm just co in case i do decide at some point to take anything from them now let's also get a general here we don't have any actual general that we can get because we don't have the uh, mana points for that but we could make our leader a general take note if you do make your leader a general it increases the chances of him dying however we are only 29 mm, it's a little bit risky not gonna lie but snap a dupes let's do it let's make him a oh god he's absolutely horrible <laughs> i mean he does have one siege pip i guess that works right now let's uh, go ahead and attack him we're gonna try and keep our units close to each other the closer they are to each other the easier it is to reinforce in case we get attacked in case our units get attacked here so we don't need to worry about our units getting stack wiped remember that with the recent changes and the recent update it's easier to get stack wiped as well as two stack wipes so that's what we're going to be uh, trying to attain sieging down the capital and the fort is everything we need in order to enforce our peace we don't need to destroy their army in fact if we don't we can use their army in the worst to come afterwards right so we kind of want to keep their army alive but if it's not possible that's fine as well remember you don't need to struggle and of course i forgot to get my advisors that's a waste of one mana point <laughs> also let's start improving with the uh pope since we have not done so yet and we need to get oh actually you know what i think i can get an alliance with them right yeah after the war is over i can get an alliance with them that's gonna fix my uh mission right there let's bring these bad boys over here so we can uh, go afterwards to Prague directly i also called in the saxons because most likely what's gonna happen is both 
Bohemia is going to focus on the Saxons because the way the AI is hard scripted is to focus on the weakest link of the enemy alliance. In my case, that would be Saxony. So I kind of use them as a little bit of a decoy in this war of mine. And now we can also get a second general, or I guess our first general, really. Let's give him a proper Austrian name. There you go. This is a, this is a pretty Austrian name, I'd say. <laughs> totally very common name up until the middle 20th century. I don't know what happened in the 20th century, why people don't like this name anymore. But, but yeah, it's not very common nowadays, let's say. And as predicted, they are sieging down Saxony and their personal Schnitzelberg. I'm also keeping my units next to my main armies, just in case they uh, have a change of heart and they try and uh, relieve the sieges here. We don't want to let that happen, do we now? We also can get a little bit more power projection by going to our rivals and sending out some insults, scornful insults to the Bohemians, I mean uh, the Burgundians. We can also embargo our rivals for a little bit extra power projection whilst we're at it. This way we go up to 25 power projection almost. Remember that power projection also gives you morale of armies, navies, and a few other modifiers that you can take advantage of in the war alongside prestige, which also gives morale of armies. So that's why right now our morale of armies is up to 2.94 rather than uh, just 2.5. When it comes to the Hungarians, there's two options. We can either wait until 1455, in which year they get a uh, decision, they get an automatic event that triggers where they either become a personal union of ours or they just go independent. It's a 50-50 chance. I don't like to leave stuff to chance, so that's why I'm actually going to enforce the PUN before they get that event. It is going to cost me a lot of aggressive expansion, but it's worth it because you get stronger faster earlier on in the game. Don't forget to use your diplomats at all times. Just improve relations with the HRE nations and do all that schnapps. You want to make sure that you get re-elected as the emperor. Right now, almost everybody loves us except Trier and Bohemia. Bohemia will automatically vote for us as the emperor once we make them our, a junior member, so that is not an issue. We just gotta make sure that Trier also votes for us, albeit... Oh, there you go. They have plus one now, so they're gonna switch hopefully next month to us. Boom, shakalaka. They just did. We are the best of the best, as they say in uh, in Germany. That's totally what they say there. And we got some admin from uh, Saxony because we're such great allies. We totally did not use them as our cannon fodder. <laughs> oh, come on. Really, Ahun? You need help from me? Fine, I'll give you freaking wasted 50 Diplo power right there. And Prague just fell. Now let's go ahead and go to the other cities. We got to siege a little bit more down because I don't think we have the war score since they sieged some Saxon cities as well. But hey, we got Olomouk, so we got both of those cities now. Oh, we have a big battalion about Unzebutschwin, yeah? What is the name of this place in uh, German? I actually don't know. Niederlausitz, Oberlausitz, something like that, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, we're gonna have to relieve the siege of Prague somehow because they have actually managed to get there. And I'm not happy. They already went up to 7 freaking percent. Quite a little bit of progress. It took me a lot longer than that, okay? Why is the AI getting preferential treatment? I'm not happy here, all right? Come on. God wills it, boys. God wills it. Let's consolidate our units with the shift and clickius. And let's go. Now, the cool part is that we have defender advantage. But sadly, that doesn't mean much because this is farmlands. Still, we did win that battle because we outnumbered them by quite a little bit. Oh, no. Ottomans just declared war on Athens. This is the end. We shall not see Byzantium anymore around the map, sadly. They did manage to take Brezgau in the meanwhile when I was not looking. So that's a little bit of an issue because we got to take it back in order to enforce our peace deal now. Or we can just make a white peace with the uh, Swiss, which is doable, actually. I just need to siege a couple of their cities cities down. Maybe I can rush that. Yeah, let's let's rush that. Make the white piece with the Swiss. Just realized I forgot to get the one stability on the, the second month. That whole rant about getting passive prosperity was useless now. <laughs> God schnapple doop looty. Why don't you never do what you actually say in your videos? Come on, man. You're not playing optimal. This is not the meta, bro. I'm so upset right now. I'm gonna throw away my E4 DLC collection. All 1,000 of them. <laughs> you know, if I was actually to attack these bad boys here, I would actually stack wipe them since this is a mount province so I get minus two dice roll for attacker these guys being the attacker because I would have uh, defender advantage there but I don't want to completely wipe out the bohemian army I want them to have some troops to actually be useful once I have them as a personal union member and look at that 42 41 they actually would agree to my terms let's go gonna bring back a couple of these diplomats actually so I uh, do a few things around can I get anything no that's fine I just want to end this as soon as possible let's go you guys come back home please and when it comes to the big juicy union here we're gonna go like this this. We're gonna get the union with Bohemia. Now, some of you might be saying, oh, why don't you also get the city of Prague since you have the historical center of Prague, which means that you're gonna get imperial authority up to 0.15 per month once you fully upgrade this. Well, there's two reasons why I'm not doing that. Sure, it's not a bad city, but if I do get Prague, 
this monument is going to take me a long time to upgrade and there's easier ways to get imperial authority plus i want to get the gold mine in keb because gold go burr and there's nothing you can say to prevent me from actually thinking that gold go burr okay so just you you mind your own business all right come on let me get my gold and we got the diplomat back now there's not many nations in the coalition only bohemia the reason for that is that uh, bohemia is in fact a czech nation it is not a german nation so despite being a part of the hre hre nations get less aggressive expansion with me for taking bohemia as it is not the same culture as they are I'm gonna core up uh, egger and we're gonna bring this up to 10 production development we're gonna do the same with the gold mine in intel let's go ahead and uh, encourage development here beforehand and let's boom it up to 10 production development the sooner you do this the more gold you get out of these gold mines and the richer you become the easier the game becomes as consequence it is gonna cost mana points that's an issue of course but hey you know everything in life costs something and it's a uh, investment that brings back a lot of profit so it's totally worth it of course these guys are gonna be super disloyal so we're gonna be improving relations with them and trying to make them very very loyal now because of the recent update we also can become an elector ourselves by usurping the bohemian uh, electoral ship it is gonna give a minus 100 relations of us and we're gonna lose five imperial authority i recommend that we do this a little bit later you could do it at the start if you really wanted to but i think it's wiser to do it after we pass at least one or two imperial reforms now we can also do the mission control bohemia that offers some imperial authority growth and legitimacy and we can do the decline of hungary that gives us a personal union on hungary like i said if you guys don't know how to handle the aggressive expansion and you really don't want to go to war with the hungarians you can just wait until 1455 for that event to trigger however i'm not a pussy so i'm just gonna attack them because you know there's that old saying if there's nation and a coalition against you it means they love you and they want to be a part of you that's what coalitions are really about my boys that's what's really happening here this mission here you can wait a little bit until you enact it because it's going to make it a lot easier for you to diplo annex your vassals or subjects so it's better to just time it for the right moment not necessarily from the beginning simply because you can click it and let's go with this um war ski against the hungarians austrian hungarian unification war i haven't even waited for my troops to reach the border that's how big of a chat i am okay be quiet <laughs> let's also destroy our fleet completely because i don't care about the fleet at all to be fair oh i forgot i gave promises to the saxons and i didn't deliver oh no they must hate my guts they don't trust me at all no they distrust me that is horrible i don't give really much of a rat's ass but hey I'll i'm pretending i care okay that's you caught me you you caught you you just you could smell my acting couldn't you oh nine they're going to break the alliance oh actually can i prevent that let's check we got 18 favors um i could do this actually bring this guy back and i could exchange favors for trust which means that they still distrust me but not as much as to cancel the alliance so there you go they're not canceling the alliance with me anymore that's just big brain right there boys that's that's what happens when you play this freaking game for nine years right there i like how uh hungary is focusing on bohemia <laughs> meaning that i don't need to deal with their units they're sieging down bohemian lands i'm kind of okay with that i do feel like i'm gonna need some more units so i'm actually going to recruit another mercenary company as a grand company let's bring them over to somogi this way we have them uh, right next to our main army sieging down their capital just in case they try to relieve the siege here we don't want that to happen do we take note the reason i went for mercenaries rather than regular units considering i have a lot of manpower i'm going for mercenaries for two reasons they have their own manpower pool so i'm not wasting any units at all realistically and up until military tech 7 mercenary units are considerably cheaper than regular units Units, so you really want to use them after military tech 7 they get more expensive than regular units so you really don't want to use them anymore that's because even though mercenaries start cheaper than uh regulars they increase in price by eight percent for each military tech whilst regular units increase in price by two percent with each military tech take note sometimes whenever your vassals or subjects take control of a province but you want to have that directly you can just transfer occupation from this button here to yourself it only works with your subjects so if it's an ally you cannot do that also i'm going to be attacking the units in here not the ones in the capital because this way it's going to force the ones in the capital by capital i actually mean fort here i i'm, I'm just weird okay just go along with it uh because it's going to force the ones in the fort over here to reinforce that battle whilst they're just sieging that and then i'm going to attack them over there as well there you go it's exactly what i was saying now i do get a debuff because i am the attacker of minus one dice roll but i'm still going to win because i got more units I got 
got a bigger PP, and that's it. That's that's why. Now let's siege down Trenton. The main problems with Hungary are not necessarily getting the Union over Hungary, but instead the main issue is the aggressive expansion we're going to get right after, because we're basically tripling in size in just the first five years here by getting these two personal unions. I'd say more than tripling, really. So yeah, that's why getting this union is going to be 59 aggressive expansion, despite not being the same culture, Germanic culture, or not being a part of the HRE. It's still a lot of aggressive expansion very early on, right after the other aggressive expansion. So we're going to get a little bit of a coalition. Now, if we wait for a couple of years, this coalition is actually going to be super small. And if we just improve relations with most of the nations in the HRE, it's going to be no coalition whatsoever. So that's what we're doing here. We're improving relations with everybody in the HRE. And we also just got the last jousting tournament, giving us 10% morale of armies and army tradition. That's a really great event to get early on. And we also managed to get Zagreb. Beautiful. Whilst I'm doing all of this, the Ottomans are still struggling to get the uh, Byzantines under their control. I guess they're not as great as people think they are, are they now? Hey, East Frisia wants to uh, join the empire. Yeah, sure, we can do that. The more the merrier, right? Eh, spoken too soon, man. Byzantium is no more 1449, four years earlier than the historical collapse of the Byzantine Empire, if we don't include the, you know, holdouts and Maria and everything. Because technically, 1453 is when the capital of the Byzantine Empire collapsed, but there were still holdouts of the Greek Byzantines around the Greece. Trenchion, I'm gonna transfer it to myself also. So, the thing is, right now, I could get the Union over the uh, Hungarians. It would not even be too much of a coalition. Look at that. Actually, manageable amount of uh, countries, but I also want to get Trenchion and Hon. First off, Trenchion is a really great fortification. It's a mountain fort, and it's a massive chokehold over here, and it also allows me expansion into Poland afterwards, but I'm taking that because it's cheaper than taking uh, Poznozy, since Poznozy also needs 13 development, Trenchion's only 6 development, and I need to take one of those two in order to take Hunt, which is the next gold mine. That means we got one in Eger, one in Intal, one in Hunt. We have three gold mines already, and my eyes are set on the fourth gold mine in Kosovo right afterwards. Oh, what? Charles is in charge of the Burgundian lands. Oh my lord. That means we're gonna get the Burgundian inheritance now. It's just a matter of whether the French or we get it. And hear me out, boys. If you really want to cheese this, you could just alt F4 until you get it instead of the French get it. That's that's the way the game goes, all right? That's if you want to have a perfect start, you could really do that. We got 92% war score. We don't even need to wait for uh Timmy shot out to finish sieging, so we're gonna bring this guy back here and we're gonna do our peace deal. Of course, we're going with the Union and we're taking the gold mine here. We're also gonna be taking as much money as we possibly can, which is apparently 337 ducats. That's fine with me. Coalition wise, surprisingly, it's really not that many nations. Even if they do start that coalition, I don't think it's gonna be triggering. We also got a free union over Croatia, but uh, this union is gonna disappear soon because the Hungarians get an event which lets them inherit Croatia. Croatia. This way you don't waste two Diplo slots. You just waste one Diplo slot, essentially. I wouldn't call it waste though, since, you know, Hungary is a pretty good country to have as a junior member, so it's really not a waste. I'm also going to be asking my uh, junior partner here to get claims on Serbia and Bosnia. Oh, did it get on Bosnia? Oh, it did get on Bosnia. Oh my lord. I was going to say you can go to your diplomatic feedback and you can set these provinces as vital interest. This way your junior members will start getting claims, but they seem to have already gotten that, so we can declare the war against the Serbs right now. We're even at the border with them, so that's just perfect timing. Let's make the Ottomans our next rivals as well, since we're at it. And we also can get claims on Croatia, Slavonia, and Dalmatia by getting the Royal Hungary mission enacted. Seized another batch of crownlands, so we went up to 13% crownlands. I didn't have enough uh, loyalty for the burgers, so I am getting uh, 3,000 rebels because of it. But it's Ayo Schnapple Dupik. Let's also pay off our loans. Now, we have no loans. If we want to get loans, we can just get another burger loan. There you go, indebted to the burgers. That's going to be another five loans and one percent interest instead of taking regular loans whenever we need them so now let's go with the war against the bosnians boyashnoki make bosnia the war target that doesn't really matter to be honest kobolidrate serbia kobolidrate telia no telia is allied to the poles what wow okay telia it's fine let's call in the uh palatinots and let's go with this war scheme the reason i'm doing this super fast is because the ottomans a hundred percent will take kosovo before me if i don't rush for it a little bit there you go the event i was talking about hungary just inherited croatia nice 
price, we now are only losing two Diplo relations, I mean Diplo points per month instead of three, and we've also become a great power from getting the union with the Hungarians. I was wrong though, we did get a little bit of a coalition that includes Poland and Venice, so after this war, we're gonna have to chill for a while before we uh, conquer anything else, I guess. I am gonna be trying to destroy that coalition though by getting relations with these nations, so I'm gonna improve relations with every single body that I can improve relations with around the uh, HRE. They should know I'm doing this for the betterment of all HRE nations. I don't know why they're even angry, man. Me getting these lands benefits all of us. Time to make Egger a full-fledged state. That means we're gonna spend some extra admin points for that. We're gonna be lowering the autonomy after we are at peace, because remember, the lower your autonomy, the more you get out of your provinces. 100% autonomy means you're getting almost no manpower and no economy out of that province, so it's really no point having it there. Hiding in the mountains, are we? Well, we cannot let that happen. Sorry, sir. That is no bueno, as they say in uh, in Albania. That's that's what they say in Albania. They say no bueno there. Now, clearly, people don't care as much as you would imagine they would care about me uh, taking all these lands, and I am going to be taking all these lands directly, canceling the cores and all that. I know what some of you thinking. Why don't you just vassalize them and feed back the cores afterwards and stuff? Sure, that's not a bad idea, but I really just want to take the land directly. So I first off increase the amount of crownlands that I have. We went up to 15% now, and also I don't want to deal with an annoying extra vassal around here since I am going to be vassalizing Bosnia anyway because Bosnia has two cores on Herzegovina and Hum, and I can just use them as a little bit of a punching bag when I fight the Ottomans later on. Ah, yes, the famous meteorite of Ensisheim bringing over the big PP in the sky and granting us one stability instead of minus one stability. That's a pretty rare event in you for my boys. And as expected, people have started to leave the coalition against me because they're scared schnapple do. And that's gonna give us the ability to start attacking nations again, essentially, without fear of a coalition triggering. Ah, yes, leave my minions, leave from the coalition. It's a lot easier if you improve relations with them, by the way, like if you get above 50 relations, they're almost guaranteed to leave the coalition after a while. Having a strong army also helps with uh, getting nations more into leaving the coalition, as does having strong alliances. So if I was to ally the British now, for example, or Castile, which doesn't seem to want to ally me, actually they would if I improve relations a little bit. And I got a bigger navy, oh god. <laughs> yeah, my navy is not my strongest forty, that's for sure. Holy snaps, Castile just ate all of C Aragon, oh my lord, that is beautiful right there. And Provence is gone, what? Provence got destroyed by Brittany, Burgundy, and the Papal States, that is juicy. Looks like Meath also, oh, I see, the British, uh, I mean, the English lost the war against the French in style. They lost the Isle of Man, they lost their foothold in Ireland. Yeah, maybe not the best option of getting an alliance with the British in that case. You need to stop calling them British, they're English, not British, big difference. Sometimes you also are able to get the personal union over Milano, but in my game I had bad RNG and I could not get the event to trigger yet, because they didn't get the disaster since they have an heir that is actually a decent heir, and that's preventing them from getting the Ambrosian Republic disaster, which happens like 9 out of 10 times really. And it seems like we have a pretty important decision to make here. Godland is asking us for our support in their struggle against the, um, the vile Danes, let's call them. If we do not support them, we lose one Imperial Authority. If we do support them, and should they win the war against the Danes, they will give us the provinces of Schleswig and Holstein. Otherwise, you know, it's gonna be bad for them. We're gonna be schnapple duping them. But that means that uh, Gotland's gonna try and go for the war against the Danes. I thought that they... Okay, that's interesting. They're not a pirate republic. They didn't go full pirate. This is really rare. I think it's like 90% chance to go pirate and 10% to go d regular duchy. I might be wrong about that. I'm not sure how it is right now because they've changed that a little bit around. A new champion of the joust. Uh, we're gonna get a general with 100 tradition or 25 legitimacy. I'm gonna get the general. I wanna see what we got here. Oh my freaking god! Stefan von Stark is an absolute freaking beast! Six fire, four shock, four maneuver, and two siege. Hot dang! I need to make this man worth- Oh my lord, that is ridiculous, dude! Did I just get mega excited about some random general that I got? I think I just did, didn't I? I can also seize crownlands. Again, the burgers are not at 50%, but we can do their mission. Op der M's six uh, production development. Let's go ahead and do that then. Boom, boom. That means we got the mission done. That means they are at 50% now, so we can seize as a crownlands. And we got up to 22 crownlands, and we also have the plus one mana privilege from day one. So now we basically are getting absolutely no actual debuffs. Since the absolutism doesn't even uh, appear until the 1600s, liberty desire from subjects is really low, by the way, and 10% tax uh, reduction is negated by the 20% plus tax 
from the uh, clergy. By the way, guys, if you are a patron or a channel member, you'll find a link to this save over on Patreon or on the channel member page. And because I want to actually explain in depth how every stage of a world conquest and a one faith run as Austria goes, I'm going to be dividing this run in a few parts and I'm going to cut the first part off here. Once we get that 7,000 likes, I'll do the second part and release it as soon as possible. And I'll link it in the description as well, as well as the pin comment so you guys know where to look right afterwards. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to unify the real Roman Empire in real life. And until the next time, check out this awesome German Empire Borders by 1515 as Brandenburg. And I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers. I would not be able to do this without all your support. 